Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our epic journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the second round of the 1953 season, the Indianapolis 500. It was held on the 30th of May, it had 78 entries, 33 of them took part in the race, with 21 of those retiring for various reasons. Bill Vukovic took pole. Fred Agabasian started from 2nd, Jack McGrath was 3rd, Manny Ayolo 4th, and Art Cross occupied the 5th spot on the grid. Bill Vukovic won the race with Art Cross coming in 2nd, 3 minutes 30.87 seconds behind. Sam Hanks shared his car with Dwayne Carter, who came home in 3rd, 4 minutes 11.50 seconds behind the leader. Fred Agabasian gave his car to Paul Rousseau, who finished in 4th, 4 minutes 39.24 seconds down, and Jack McGrath crossed the line in 5th, 7 minutes 49.64 seconds down. Vukovic also managed to set the fastest lap of the race, a 1 minute 6.24 second lap. I think I covered pretty much everything about this circuit. There really isn't much to say that hasn't been said already. It's a large oval with four corners, two very long straights and two shorter straights. Speed and the ability to slipstream are key here. Or it would be if the AI had the capability of racing close together. Perhaps one day. One can only hope. Coming around to finish our first flying lap, a, which is a 105.6, not a bad lap time. However, I would like to improve on this if at all possible. And now coming around to set a 105.5, uh, a slight improvement, however not as much as I would have liked to. Uh, and I actually try. this was my fastest lap, although I tried to go faster, it didn't really happen. Anyway, here is the grid walk. We have Fangio and Paul Ascari in second, Nino Farina third, Mike Hawthorne fourth, Jose Freudan Gonzalez is fifth, Moneto sixth, Harry Shell is seventh, Louis Rosier eighth, Maurice Trintignant is ninth, De Graffari tenth, Andy Higgs is starting from eleven, Herman Lang is twelve, Onofre Marimon thirteenth, Sterling Moss is 14th, Oscar Galvez 15th, Jean Berra 16th, Ken Wharton is 17th, Roberto Mieres is 18th, and starting from the back is Prince Bira in the Connaught from in 19th. So here we are at the Indianapolis 500. We've won the 1950 uh, Indianapolis 500 and retired in 1951 and 1952. Hopefully 1953 will be a little bit friendlier to us as the flag is dropped and we have a pretty good start however because of because the cars are so bunched up together uh, I didn't really have too much space to maneuver around. I did manage to go up into 10th place however the Grafari there we saw him overtake us so we felt down to 11, uh, yeah, back to 11. Then we managed to gain a couple of positions due to uh, an accident there, and over we immediately lost all those places. As I was trying to be as cautious as possible not to crash into anyone because, well, retiring from the race again would be very, very uh, embarrassing, really. As we take a look at a replay of the start there, again, I try to. I had a very good start, I tried to get around the cars in front, however, there wasn't too much space though. And there we see the accident that took place. Um, it was actually Harry Shell in the uh, Simca Gordini, there we see him crashing into one of the red cars, not sure if it's a Ferrari or um, Maserati, but he crashed into the, fer the red car and was sent straight into the wall as we now start uh, lap 2 chasing after Herman Lang we are in 10th at the moment we see a red flag and that was one of the um, Maseratis there facing the wrong way as we come around to start lap 3 we overtake uh, Herman Lang and move up into 9th we have Sterling Moss and his Connaught right in front of us about 4 tenths of a second in front 
and we see a couple of cars at the side of the road and we move up into 8th still chasing after Sterling Moss in his Connaught L trying to look for a gap but there's none just a couple of seconds later we do manage to overtake Sterling Moss and we are ha now having a look at um, uh, Tulo de Grappa is in his Maserati coming into uh, turn 4 I believe this is yes it is trying to stay close to uh, the Grappa use his slipstream flick to the left there and there we are we are through and up into 6th place on only lap 4 now as we will chase after Jose Forlan Gonzalez on lap 5 we actually catch up to Gonzalez and pass him so we move up into 5 we are now in the points next is Felice Bonetto who we actually overtake on lap 6 or not I, actually not I go very wide and the uh, wall there kind of sucks me in like a magnet and was kind of difficult to detach but I did it in the end and we're now looking at Maurice Centineo in the second Simca who crashes into the Ferrari of Louis Rosier and they both lose wheels and kind of end the race and here we have a look at Louis Rosier he tries to overtake Sterling Moss however Sterling Moss forces him onto the grass he touches the grass, loses control of the car, he tries to uh, get back into the race, however uh, Trintignant comes from behind, crashes into him and ending both of the race, so that those are two more um, retirements to add to the total as we still chase as we are still chasing after Jose Froelan Gonzalez, lap 7 now coming into uh, turn 4 I believe, yes uh, we managed to overtake Roland Gonzalez once again, so we move back up into fifth and into the points. And we now we are now uh, challenging Felice Bonetto for fourth. And it seems that we have slightly better uh, better speed here, and we take fourth quite easily. And we are now looking at Juan Manuel Fangio. Hopefully, we can get around him as well at some point. And we do. As we come out of turn 2, for some reason the A is very slow there, not entirely sure why, but we take 3rd for a brief second. Nope, we do take 3rd and we are chasing after Nino Farina. Lap 22, we finally catch up to Nino Farina and we are having a look to overtake him side by side as we come around to finish lap 22 and we move up into second position there. Mike Hawthorne is leading the race, he's about 2 seconds up the road, hopefully we'll catch him as well, and we indeed do, lap 27, he's coming around to lap one of the cars, and that kind of goes very very badly, the A is actually quite incapable of lapping slower cars, I'm not entirely sure why, but that was the end of um, Hawthorne's run, and here we have a replay, unfortunately we only cut to this camera once uh, Hawthorne crashes, crashes into the wall so didn't see too much there but that's kind of what happens when the AI tries to lap slower cars unfortunately so we are now in the lead of the um, Indianapolis 500 and we are on lap 46 building slowly building a gap on Nino Farina and here we see uh, Roberto Mieres, who is having a gearbox problem, coming into the pits to retire. Next we have Prince Bira, who... I'm not entirely sure what's happening, but he's stopped in the middle of the road. He probably crashed into someone. Next we have Alberto Ascari in his Ferrari, losing... Uh, stepping onto the grass, losing control of the car and crashing into the wall. Next we have... Um, Sterling Moss who's having whose suspension gave up and he retired as well so those are four more retirements to add to the total as we continue to build a gap on Nino Farina lap 54 and we're now about 54 seconds in front of Farina doing very very well 
and we see Galvez coming into the pits to retire due to uh, once again due to a gearbox problem not entirely sure what happened probably he's stuck or something but he also retires and we are still still building a gap on Nino Farina lap 57 and we are coming around to actually lap Nino Farina so we are one lap in ahead of second place at this point and lap 62 again I cr uh, kind of touched the wall which sucks me in however I once again managed to um, get away from the wall and here we see Zambera coming into the pit in his Cooper who had he had some brake problems next we have uh, Ken Wharton in his Cooper coming in to retire while well, coming into pit however we know that the pits are kind of bugged so he retires this is uh, Fanjo I believe uh, who ran out of fuel so he is out of the race next we have Onofre Marimon in his uh, Maserati coming in to retire then we have Herman Lang who ran out of fuel and kind of crashed into the wall there and uh, we also have uh, Gonzalez who also ran out of fuel and well obviously retired and finally we have Felice Bonetto and De Grafarid in their Maseratis both coming in to retire well initially I'm guessing they didn't actually come on in to retire but that's, that's what happens when the pits are uh, bugged. So now we are on lap 63. Uh, the only two drivers left are myself and Farina, so we skip straight to the end of the race as we come around to take the win of the Indianapolis 500, our second win here. Um, Nino Farina finished in second, and Mike Hawthorne, despite uh, retiring early on in the race managed to pose the fastest lap of the race so he does get a point lucky him and here are the retirements well pretty much everyone except myself and Nino Farina so that was the Indianapolis 500 uh, after retiring two times we finally managed to win another um, Indianapolis 500 so that's the second win here which is I guess kind of good but anyway here are the career statistics and there have been a couple of modifications and I'm going to talk about them as we get to them so this was uh, Andy's 26th Grand Prix his best start is still from fifth no pole positions obviously he has set five fastest laps his best finish is first the next two two uh, entries here ha have been uh, suggested by a uh, Scandinavian who has suggested quite a few other things in the past so thank you so one of the things he has suggested is number of races completed which are 17 out of which 16 are point finishes so these are uh, Scandinavian suge new suggestions anyway uh, out of those 16 points finishes and he managed to win 10 so we he entered the double digit phase out of those 10 wins 10 uh, two of them were at the Indianapolis 500 and next we have a new uh, entry which was suggested by Victor Hedgehog YT I'm guessing that stands for YouTube he suggested that I also keep track of uh, wins in Monaco we haven't had any wins there yet we only raced there once in 1950 and there hasn't been a Monaco Grand Prix since and if I'm not mistaken there's not going to be one until 1955 so winning there won't be anytime soon and he also managed to win two championships has a total of 107 points has retired nine times has experienced 566 out of 738 laps 
has three bronze trophies, one silver trophy, ten gold trophies, and as an extension, ten podiums. And now we have a quick look at the champion at the championship tables. Gonzalez is still leading the race thanks to his win and fastest lap in at the Argentine Grand Prix. We move up into second, thankfully. The Grafanid is third, Farina fourth, and Roberto Mieres is fifth. Well, actually, Nino Farina and Mieres kind of share six points at the moment. And everyone up to eighth place have points scored. But yeah, that, is, that was the Indianapolis 500. Finally, we managed to break our retirement uh, streak. So... And we did it in, in style. We managed to win, which is very, very nice, I'd say. But anyway, that is the end of the Indianapolis 500 and of this video. One thing I'd like to mention, I've decided that starting this season, I, I will uh, start the polls to vote for next season's team immediately as the season starts. So some of you already started voting so if you want to have an impact on Andy Higgs career make sure to visit the link in the description to vote for next season's team I'm kind of fumbling on my words here now but anyway that is it from me I hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to vote for next season's team thank you all so much for watching and as always stay sharp